it's another episode of Bob. In this episode, I'm going to be fiddling around with the body frame, the engine and all sorts of stuff. If you like it, if you don't, comments down below, contact me. Church House Classics, it is all one word, at gmail.com. And if you fancy donating to the channel, hitting the old tip jar, buy me a pint, then there's a PayPal me link scrolling down here. I really appreciate everyone that does donate to the channel. You've enjoyed my work. Anyway, enjoy this film. Oh, there we go. Mouthful of coffee. Ah. It'd be nicer if it was gin, I tell you. But it isn't, because it's only a Thursday. We don't do gin on Thursdays. But then I've heard Thursday is the new Friday. Right, what's that? Wipe the excess off the block. That's beautiful, that. Wipe the excess off everything that I've been touching. Track it everywhere. It all comes off. Right, now, engine mounts. Where are they? Taking right off, it's going to loosen it so that I can put it on when I've done the other side. There's another thing that 17 mil spans are really bloody good at. Oh. Fuck it now, Richard. Oh. Bastard. Right, now we come down a bit further. Let's go up a smeg. Now it can go down. That was Giles from Pro Bonio Stag Project. Um, he's been out and bought himself a VW Type 2 camper. Ah! <laughs> you just know. Oh. This kind of thing. Richard, can you help me? Giles, I don't do Type 2 campers. They're all right. Quite like them. But I do Land Rovers, Range Rovers, Stags. I can see myself getting into type 2 campers. Um. Right, exhaust manifolds. Where are we? Here we are. Right aside. Lovely. Right, I've got a set of bolts for this now. Now I've done all that shit, you can come down over here and get out of my way. Because I want to. What are you looking at? Got plumbing tabs. Got some gaskets. Right. Gaskets. I want four of these. It's possible to put these gaskets on upside down, so be aware of that. If you put them on upside down, you're going to swear. Let me show you. Oh, manifold. To me, Richard, to me. Right, you look at the ports on the side here. And you think, yeah, that'll go on like that. 
oh no, that's not right. So you put it on like that, which is wrong way round. See? See how that overlaps there? What is the right way round is that, where the holes line up and it all goes in. And the trick is, I think, that extension, straight edge, extension, there. So you always end up with two like that and two like that. What is mate? Marvellous. Bloody marvellous. Right, the other thing I need is two of these. When it comes to the locking tabs, I tend to have them so that they go forwards and forwards and backwards and backwards. Just makes life a little bit tidier. So what I do is I'll put that through there. This might work better with washers. Let's try it without washers first of all. And obviously these things are offset. Make sure you put them on the right way up, otherwise it just looks fucking ridiculous. Right, having done that, let's put these on, one that way, one that way. And then you're going back over there. I don't know if you can see. Can you see past the turret? You can. Right, and then what you basically want to do is fit these two bolts first of all. And then the other should fit. If you don't do these two first of all, then you will find it to be an absolute and utter pain in the ass to fit these things. That's that one. Now obviously I've not got all the other gaskets and stuff in yet, which is why it's important to remember which way round the lock tabs and the gaskets go. So on this side, we want that one there like that. We want that like that. We want a bolt. So what I'll do is I'll put the bolt through that first of all. I'll put the bolt halfway through the gasket. Then I will go in here like that till you can look at the back of my arm till that goes down there like that. And then it should line up on the thread hole. Sometimes they do. Most of the time they do. This one's lined up. That's good. These two holes here on this are pilot holes. That's why you do those first. Right, and then we got this one and this one. Put that through there. Put that in there. And then do the gasket up. Is it going in? It is. There we go. Cushy. The top bolts are all in. Bottom bolts, just make sure the gasket goes through and everything is lined up. And again, it should line up and go in. If you don't know about these two bolts being the pilot holes, then you will struggle with these, I'm afraid. There's nothing I can do about that. And then the other danger is if you don't do that and you do manage to get it to fit, you end up with a stress crack going across the middle of it. And then you'll be wondering why your exhaust is blowing. Right, the last bolt to thread in, this one. I put these ones in because it carries the heat shield um, that protects the top of the starter star motor. That's in. Let's take that bolt out of there for a second because it's got a big washer on it. Torque wrench settings. Oh! Ten to fifteen. I.e. hardly anything at all. I tend to nip them up. Working front seat, two pilot bowls. 
bolts, I should say, not bowls. We're just taking up the slack at the moment. one down here big bastard right now look at the crisscross pattern easy as that. Right, let's go with the tool wrench. Again. Pretty much where I was. Not very tight at all and the reason that you kind of need these lock tabs is because they're not very tight at all uh, and if you don't do them up tight enough then you're going to have a problem what I'm going to do is turn it around so it's actually the, the lock is on the, the flat um, a couple of these I don't bother locking so these two in the middle I don't bother locking the bottom bolts but everything else you should go to lock ticking noises thinking it's your hydraulic tap it nope it's the exhaust manifold gasket because these bolts are undone because I've seen all manner of bolt kits out there things like I don't know there's one with a hex kind of head on it and you think oh that's fancy Oh, it isn't because I have to lock the tab against it because it's round. There we are, that one down there. Now, this one is a bit of a swine to get to, especially when the inner wings are in place. But you just have to persevere with them. If you can't get them done up, then, you know, maybe a dab of thread lock or something on the bolts. But really, they're there for a reason. to get to them. So I might just take those two bottom bolts out and put some thread lock on it. Don't need to fuck around with that now. That's one done. Been a long day. Uh, right, okay. The more observant of you will have noticed that the goalpost is back on the car. Um, basically what I've been doing, when I took it off, this piece was still attached. So I've tidied up all the welds filled in a lot of the welds that were around and about that one still needs flatting back got it into a state now where the bottom tailgate opens and closes opens right down and into the void down here that's all done tailgate closes sorry you can't see that this side I still need to do now <clears throat> when I took it all apart, the top half 
from the panel I welded on down here. They came apart. So I've lined everything up again because it was a bit silly of me not to make a mark measurement. And now I'll cut and weld that and then I can finish off the welding down here. Can't do it here because there's too much shit around. So I'll have to kind of screw it into place, take it off. While I was doing all this, I thought, right, I'm going to line up the top section here as well. So I've got it more or less now where I want it. Um, there's a little bit of pulling and tugging and stuff and just tidying up uh, bits, but this is all still loose. This is, this is not attached. I think it's fairly where I want it to be. I'm just going to double check measurements tomorrow um, and then I'm going to weld this onto the top of the goalpost. Still need to deal with the slot in here, which I'll do. I am having a wash wipe on the back of this car. But that's been today's work, really. A lot of it has been around reassembling, aligning, measuring, aligning, measuring, aligning, measuring, aligning, and a little bit of measuring. So this side now I'm quite happy with. Um, okay, it still needs pulling in together. It's going to need a little bit of filler in various places. I'm going to bang some of these big dents that are on here. And these things were never beautiful, even in the day. Um, I'm going to bang some of the dents. There is a curtain that goes over this anyway, so you won't see those holes. Um, I can straighten that out anyway. Um, I also want to get this top rail aligned. As you can see, I've slid the roof forwards to facilitate this work. Uh, on my own. <laughs> on my own. Um, and then once I've got the goalpost done, you can see it's actually looking like a goalpost now. Once I've got the goalpost done, then this whole thing is going to come apart and be welded together. It's all going to happen. Quite pleased with it. It's all happening. There is one thing I've just noticed though, which is fatting me off. That's not gone on level, but it's gone on to the same holes it come off. Why has that not gone on level? Just double check. That one doesn't look level either, so maybe that's the way they were. I'll, I'll just have a double check with my dad's. Make sure I've not balls that up. Um, I do love my new welder though. Oh yes, so much easier to use. The weather's turned inclement. That's Diana is here. My dad's car. I drove that back yesterday. It was quite stormy out there. Right, so that's all been quite good and effective that. Looking forward to getting these body side frames off in order that I can uh, get them finished up before I take the roof off and unbolt the goalpost I need to put the section along the top along the top here. Return edge, check the glass fits on both sides. The only reason for that is that attaches to it and I need that as a reference point because you've got quite big slots here for the whole thing to fit together in uh, Land Rover's traditional quarter of an inch tolerance. Some say half an inch. I think it's probably near a quarter of an inch. Um, yeah, productive. Got this piece welded on here. Used a spot welder. Very, very good to use. However, fiendishly heavy. A bloody phone. I'm going to finally get onto Bob's door. This is the driver's door on Bob. Um, I've done a kind of a bit of a video on it. It's a bit of sunlight here today. I've done a video on it before, but there was kind of quite heavy damage in this area, which I've managed to beat most of it back into the right sort of shape. Certainly, I'm happy enough with it. You can see there was a big crease along there. I'll, I'll press that further. Um, the main thing I'm going to work on today, I think, is this area here. Because that this bit... Is a piece of piss. That bit is the bit that I'm struggling with, um, and even even little bits like this, tiny localized holes here, that that just cut them out. It's fine. I'm happy with that. It's going to need a new skin. I've not been able to find um, a decent driver's door skin um, or driver's door um, at all. Put that door on the passenger, so that makes life a little bit easier there. And that's the. The remains of a scrap door um, that I, it was torn apart, someone had kind of hacked it out, and oh, it was a bit of a 
the misery. But you can see down here, someone's just used an angle grinder to open up the door. It's very subtle. But the rib along the middle is actually in fairly good order. So I'm going to chop that out first of all. And then I'm going to work out. I know it's a passenger door. And I know it's a driver's door. But I'm going to chop out on this first of all. And I'm going to work out which bits I need to use. Um, and how I'm going to be able to do it. Because basically, the rib is seen. But all of this detail is not seen. Now I should be able to get that strength back in there. And I should be able to put this bracing back in. And that's, that's my intention. So let me uh, get that bit done. I'll cut that out first of all. And then we'll move on to this. Nice little gift arrived this morning. Thank you, James. That is marvellous. I'm well chuffed with that. That is a beaut. Always need a pallet truck. Always useful. Always useful. Um, <coughs> another donation to Church House Classics. Thank you very much. Right, I think I shall get on with this now. A short while later... So this is the pit I've uh, managed to haul out. As you can see, it's actually the steel. It's in pretty good order. There's some very, very localised kind of light corrosion on the surface here. There's a hole there. At this end, it gets a bit desperate. But I don't need that end. That's kind of where we're going with it. That's what it's going to look like. That's where I want it to go. See? And it sort of fits, really. Um, now, there's a couple of um, concerns. So first and foremost, this piece here, I don't need it because that piece there is good. Replace all of this whole section. On the reverse side, we've got the reinforcing rib, which is only a kind of piece of 20 gauge steel that's spot welded on its entire length. Now, where it's blown here, it's also blown there. And at this end, it's starting to look decidedly ropey. So, what I'm probably going to do, because on this side here you can see the depth where they spot welded it on, and especially up here, really deep pressing on the spot weld. Um, and I think that's because the door was dented. <clears throat> I'm actually going to take this rib off. Take it off. I'll put the skin on here, and I'll make up a new reinforcing rib that goes on the back. And I think that's going to be the easiest way of dealing with this. On the back here, you can see it's just very, very light surface corrosion. So there you go. Even though the door looked terminal, don't chuck things away, chops. There was bits I could salvage out of that. Now, interestingly, I wonder if this has been to the same beach that Bob's been to. Uh, because it's got the same black paint all over it that Bob had all over him. This stuff. Everywhere, kind of on Bob that was inside the doors and so forth. You probably need to look inside the old door, but it had black paint all over the inside of it. I'm just wondering, is this part of the Bristol crew? There we are, like that. Part of the B Bristol crew, black paint job. Now I wonder, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? So the door I've salvaged there, which came from the same location as Bob, um, so I bought it from the same chap as part of a stash of spares. Be good, Bob's original door gets repaired with another piece of, uh, cast off from the Bristol boys I think that'll work I'm happy enough with it we're mixing up the colours a bit on this at the moment we've got quite a bit of um, um, Sahara beige not Sahara beige what are you talking about Sahara gold going on there now really so we've got Maasai red roof we've got Sahara gold roof window tops whatever colour that is it's a later uh, Land Rover colour. I don't think that's Tuscan blue. Well, it might be. That's Tuscan blue. Yeah, it might be Tuscan blue. Tuscan blue looks brighter to me. Look at it. There we are. That's Tuscan blue. That's not Tuscan blue. See the difference? Maybe you can. Maybe you can't. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> it is what it is. I'm going to drill these out now because I need to repair that section anyway. Um, you're probably all shouting, why didn't you just put a new bit of steel in? Well, I've got this whole chunk here that's missing off that door. And also, when the door trim pieces go on, they butt up against this line here. Um, and it's really obvious 
it really does stand out. If I open this one, ugh, this lip along here, it wants to be as nice as you can get it because all of this lot here, all of these chunks, all of this, all of this, all of this, you can see from the inside of the car. Oh, it doesn't shut very nicely, does it? Oh, it's not, I've not shimmed up the hinges yet on this side. Um, I haven't shimmed up any hinges yet. <clears throat> so because of that, that's why I kind of am heading down this route. Worst case scenario, we should just put a skim of filler in some of these spot weld holes. But if I take this inside piece off, especially at this end where it's challenged, then that's easy enough to do. Right, I'm going to start getting these out, I think. You don't have to watch me drilling spot welds. Lucky you. Well, that's got that off. I'll tell you one thing. There's paint underneath this. Look, there's paint on that side and that side. I expect they sacked the person who built these doors. Anyway, it's probably why this rib has survived better than that one. I will get that apart and tell you if there's any paint behind that. <clears throat> um, there was quite a lot of corrosion on the back of this. You can see it's going to have been a good idea to take this off. This is the worst section. This is the bit that was at this end. Uh, that bit was better, but still quite a lot of corrosion on it. Um, so it's worthwhile taking this bit off. It's easy enough to make up a replica of that. Um, and now I can beat all of those holes out, you see, and repair that localised rusty hole there. Right, so that's got the majority of that now how I want it. This is all the crap that came out from behind. Uh, I'm not destroying this floor, by the way. I'm just using it as a bench. Don't get berserk about it. It's a, uh, a four-door aluminium floor. It's gonna, actually going to go into my car, into L95. Um, so it's a four-door one because it's shorter. There you go. Um, right, that's done that. I'm going to get the zip wire brush, that thing, noisy thing, onto here. Just clean up this edge. Put some rust treatment on it. As I say, I don't really need too much up here where it's looking a bit shit. So I'm not bothered about that. Because most of this area here, you can see, is quite clean already. But I will need to take all this apart now. Now, it's going to be a struggle taking this apart because I've got all the reinforcing frame on the other side. So what I'm actually going to do with this is drill the spot welds from this side. Because I don't need to do it any other way if you get the drift. Drill the spot welds, get the reinforcing piece out, see what's left, um, and then line that up, stitch it in. Piece of piss, eh? What do you reckon? <laughs> Gotta be easy, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> Cocky no. If I was going absolutely berserk, I could even use sections of this bottom piece here to weld splice bits in. Because bits of it aren't horrific, but to be honest, I probably won't. I'll just make up sections, fold them in. Oh, yes. Okay, so, <clears throat> been trimming pieces up, bearing in mind that the mounting holes are more or less in the same place every single time. We're, we're maybe a couple of millimetres out on it. That's not a mounting hole. Do apologise. That's not a mounting hole. That's just another fucking hole. Um, but basically, if I line this up on the corners here, lines up there, lines up there, <coughs> and lines them up here as well, I'm pretty happy with that. The only bit that's a minor cock up is up here. I'm about two men out up there. The rest of it... I'm taking out all of that rust, the whole damn lot. So what I'm really going to do now, I think, is I'm going to scribe down here and I'm going to butt weld that there and here, and here. And then when I've done that, I will start working on just taking a cutting disc along the edge there, just a little bit at a time, clamp it nice and tight and weld it. <clears throat> all right, so I'm cutting out the rusty metal and leaving the good metal in place. Before I go too berserk on this, I need to clean this piece up here, this rib. But what I might do is that rib can come out because it's attached to the inside here um, and I will fix it and weld it back in again. That's going to be a better way of doing that. But yeah, <clears throat> that's not actually taking that long to do, to be quite honest. So I don't know why this was, why I was holding back from this job. Sometimes you just get yourself in a bit of a, a rut 
but I'm going to get this done. Oh yes, door shell. Majority of the door shells then can be back together. Still needs to work on this edge. I'll go through that. I've done it before. It's a piece of piss. It really is. I'll tell you what. I flipping love my new welder. Oh yes, this thing is. Ah, oh, it's the business. Well, weld, pardon the expression, fucking tinfoil with it, I tell you. Right, so basically, we've done a bit of flatting back, of course. Um, but I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with this section yet, because I've got those chunks. And I might actually end up just splicing just another complete section of steel in there, which is why I've not welded all the way along there yet. That joint's all in. This joint is largely in. Um, it's not bad. Welded that hole up there. There's a little bit of twist on it. It's twisting down there, but overall, let's get a straight edge. Um, oh, I have a straight edge over here. Oh, I thought I had a straight edge. Oh, no, it's on the front of the car. There it is. Ah, Mr. Gravity. What's it look like? I'll tell you what, it's not bad. That's not bad at all. Something I can live with. Oh yes, right, packing up now. Bad enough. It's almost 10 o'clock and it's a Saturday. 